Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, I have a story here that I was actually going to do yesterday, uh, but then something happened, and one of my good viewers, Wilma Parker, uh, thank you, Wilma, I did say I'd give you a shout out for this, uh, sent me a link which had a PDF uh, with the results of a court case taken effectively by Scottish Association of Landlords against the government, and it was re the, uh, the rent freezes and the inability to evict tenants. Uh, and of course, the result was that it went down on the side of the tenants. Uh, and I said before when this happened that any kind of rent control will always fail because they failed to take in one of the most basic human precepts. And that is costs increase and those costs need to be met. And if they're not and people start losing money, then they sell the properties and they just pull out of the market because it is a business at the end of the day. Yes, it's people's homes. But it's also a business. And when you're just looking at this from a tenant's point of view and you're doing nothing for the uh, landlords, the landlords get up and walk away. And that, of course, is what has been happening. And it's going to get worse, which we'll discuss in the main body of the, of the video here. But uh, Edinburgh has got a massive housing crisis caused entirely by SNP policy, one that could easily have been avoided, one that can even be fixed. And all it needs is the SNP to admit they were wrong and cancel it. So that isn't going to happen. But let's take a look at the story and remember that, yeah, I was right. Here goes. Right, now I'm not going to go through the uh, the legal findings because it's 36 pages long. Uh, it's very dry legalese uh, and it's something I wouldn't subject you to. Uh, but basically what it was, was the, the court said that the Scottish government were within their right to admit a house free, a house uh, a rent freeze, um, and that you uh, they were right to basically ban tenants uh, from being evicted, even if without paying their rent. And they gave them, I think it was a six monthly uh, leeway. So if you didn't pay rent for six months, at that point, then could you apply to the court for eviction? Um, and, but of course, it's going to take months beyond that. Effectively, what it meant is someone could sit day one, pay a month's rent in advance, one month's uh, deposit, and then sit there for a year before they had to leave. And of course, then they just go to the next one and do it again and again and again. Um, and, and that just is clearly wrong. And once the government have effectively legalised that, and these people are going, yeah, well, look, you've got to have a, a rent increase. You know, the insurance costs have gone up. The, uh, the management company costs have gone up. The rent rates have gone up. Everything's gone up. You've got to be able to get those costs back if they, if those tenants own those houses they'd have to find that extra money um, and so you know it's got to be something that is recoupable as part of maintaining that house and of course the, the, the cost of repairs if something goes wrong you've got to ultimately the tenant will be paying for these things now i will before we get into this it's going to get worse because they're now trying to bring in a new thing which is not only can you not put the rent up while someone is in the property but if one, pe one set of people leave and you've got a, a gap and then new people go in, you're not allowed to increase the rent between the old tenant and the new tenant. Although how you police that, I don't know. But that's what they're saying. So even in between tenancies, when you've got a change of tenant, they're saying that they want to control the housing market because they have a major problem, one of their own making. Now, of course, the real reason we've got to look at this is that for most, most of the reason that anyway is this, um, is that they are paying the rent for a lot of these properties. Now, if it's a private renter who's not uh, in any way claiming any kind of rent help with, you know, from the government, you wonder, well, this is a private agreement between two people. What business is it of the government's what rent a landlord charges a tenant? But of course, what it is, is that um, a lot of these tenants are paid by the government, getting rent um, rent allowance, aren't they, from the government? Uh, and so it, the government saying, "Well, why is the tenant, why is the landlord putting this up? We haven't to pay more." Well, yes, because that's how it works. And so, what happens? And what what has happened is people are leaving the market. The, the The landlords are just selling up. They're saying to these tenants, "Sorry, got to go. Bang, out you go," and they sell the house. Um, and evicting tenants because you're selling the house is one of the few things you're allowed to evict tenants for. Uh, and so, yes, they're all evicting the tenants, selling the house. Away it goes. Somebody buys it. They live in it. And there isn't 
a rental property. That's a rental property gone. And in fact, over 100,000 rental properties in Scotland have gone. Uh, and that is why there is such a major problem, because a lot of people will never be able to buy a house. They need, they require rental properties. But the SNP has gone down so hard uh, on the landlords. And now what is happening, and this is the, this is the juicy bit, is that they've clamped down on landlords hard so much, so much, so much. All these landlords are selling up and leaving. And it's getting worse because obviously, say, going forward, they're not going to allow you to raise the rent between tenancies. They're still keeping all this, uh, can't put that on, can't put that on, can't put that on, and all this on. So the problem is going to continue to get worse. But they're moaning. They're moaning now. that all what, What's wrong? All these, all these landlords are selling up. These landlords should not be allowed to sell up. This is the words. They're now about to try and bring in a rule to say that landlords cannot sell their properties. They have to keep them as rental properties, even though they could be losing money on them. That's quite clearly madness. That's quite clearly got to be illegal. But hey, this is the SNP. They'll probably get away with it. They own the courts. So why wouldn't they? Anyway, we'll quickly have a look at this this article because this is basically a, a, a little. This is what this is one city, but it isn't just one city, of course. It's the whole of Scotland. But we're just going to look at this article here, very quickly. Edinburgh's housing emergency must be a wake-up call for the SNP government. Scots Tory MSP Miles Briggs says homelessness is spiring out of control on their watch, and warns that Patrick Harvey's controversial rent cap has made the crisis far worse. And Everyone knew it would. Uh, Edinburgh councillors are set to declare a housing emergency in the capital, citing an acute homelessness problem, a severe shortage of social housing and the highest rent rises in the UK. Uh, this is why they want to bring in this uh, ban on rent rises between tenancies. You now can, you're only allowed to put it up by 3%. They have relented. It's not a zero, but 3%. So, of course, the moment it's due, they put 3% on. You go, well, you know, inflation is 10%, but, you know, 3%. But what they're saying is you're not allowed now to do it between tenancies. So, of course, while you still legally can at the moment, uh, what's happening is one tenant's leaving. They're going, right, that's... That was £1,000 three years ago. It's 1030 now because we've only had one year of putting it up by 3%. But really, it should be, if you go by inflation, boom, boom, 1250 And so, bang, somebody leaves and it goes up £250 a month. So you're getting these massive, what looks like massive increases in rent. But in actual fact, if you go all the way through, it's only in line with inflation across the last three years. It's not the landlord's fault that the costs go up, is it? Uh, and I'm not, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm just telling you how the economic truth is, you know. Um, but of course, it's this very problem that's causing the housing crisis because the tenants are going, I've had enough of this, I'm out. Not the tenants, the landlords are going, I've had enough of this and I'm out. And of course, it's screwing the tenants, but it's not the tenants' fault either. It's entirely the SNP. Anyway, the council will vote on a motion put forward by Housing Committee convener Jane Meager at the a meeting on Thursday. Following that was last night, following the calls from charities on other organisations, including Shelter Scotland. Such a move would make Edinburgh the second council and first city in Scotland to declare a housing emergency. Argyll and Butte Council declared a housing emergency in June. The motion urges the council to push for more funding from the Scottish Government, as well as to work with outside organisations to build an emergency action plan to tackle the crisis. Well, there's only one way you can tackle that crisis, and that is to stop punishing landlords and to build social housing. Councillors uh, will be asked to note the acute nature of Edinburgh's homelessness crisis with approximately 5,000 households in temporary accommodation and it's going to get worse. It's the highest number in Scotland. The severe shortage of social rented homes with approximately 200 bids for each property advertised through Edinet Edindex uh, and an additional pressures for accessible and family homes. The increasing pressure within the private rental sector with the highest rental inflation in the United Kingdom at 13.7%. But if you consider where it was when they was in 2020 when rent rises were banned until now, over three years, 13.7% is still below inflation because you had 10% last year alone and it's 8% this year. So everyone's moaning 13%, but it's still a below inflation rise. 
Um, it goes on to request that the deputy leader of the council writes to ministers, including First Minister Abba Yusuf and his deputy Shona Robinson. No one knows why, because it would mean that they'd have to admit they got something wrong. That ain't going to happen, is it? Uh, Scottish Conservative housing spokesman Miles Briggs, a low the MSP, said the declaration should be a wake-up call for the Scottish government. And should it be passed, uh, should it, sorry, should it be passed? It says homelessness is spiralling out of control on their watch. And it is shocking that a record number of children are now stuck in temporary accommodation. Well, when you start screwing over landlords, when you start forcing rent controls, when you start saying that they cannot evict problem tenants, what are they going to do? They're going to sell up and get out. And of course, when there's fewer rental properties, then rents are going to rise and they're going to rise big time. Uh, it should never have reached a point where councillors in the capital are having to declare a housing emergency. And I've repeatedly urged SNP Green Ministers to do this, which speaks volumes for their total inaction. And it's just occurred to me as an aside here, uh, they've, they've also changed the rules on temporary accommodation, on short-term accommodation, which previously they used to put families in you know, on an emergency basis. But of course, because they've had to try and put all the licensing and all the short-term accommodation now, short-term lets and things, uh, a lot of them are getting out of the game as well. So you've, you're even running out of the short-term lets as well. It's almost as though it's deliberate, isn't it? Let's screw over landlords so hard they all stop renting and sell houses and move out of the rental market. So there aren't enough rental properties. And then when we have all those temporary places we used to use, let's screw them over as well. So they all close up and let's make sure that we've got literally nowhere to put people. And then we'll sit back smug on our huge salaries in our nice houses, rubbing our hands in glee, doubles and trebles all round. I'll have a wee Glenn Fiddock, you know, lovely, num, 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 big fat cigar. Meanwhile, children on the streets freezing to death. Like some Victorian, you know, horror show, really, isn't it? And all done because of their policy. Literally, they agreed to do this. They pushed this. They've created this problem. Tenants' Rights Minister Patrick Harvey. Big idea to solve the crisis, supported by the SNP and Labour MSPs, was to impose a rent cap on the market, which fails. And it failed. It failed in Ireland when they did it. And so they relented and they reversed it and they, they cancelled it. Then they thought, you know, I know it failed the first time, but let's have another go. It might work this time. So they tried it again. Failed the second time and they really got rid of it. And that's the problem. Uh, and even in Ireland, even in Ireland, when they had the rent cap, they still allowed you to raise the rents in between tenancies because they know costs go up. Not the SNP. Oh, no, 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 no. And they can't go back because it means they failed. And that must never be seen. Uh, anyway, he said, uh, as I and others warned, this has made matters worse in the housing market at a time when we're facing a homelessness crisis and many people cannot even get on the property ladder. You can't even get on the rental ladder now because there's so few rental properties because the, the SNP government has done their absolute best to destroy rental property ownership. They've, they've really gone to war on private landlords and the private landlords have gone, you win, we're selling up. And now the government are going, why are these landlords all selling up? That's not right. We need them. We need them. Well, who's to blame here? I shall come up. Now, that court case um, that I mentioned, uh, it was, and I've got it here, and I, I have to read this because I can't remember the title. It is from the Outer House Court of Session, Opinion of Lord Harrower, in the petition of, first, the Scottish Association of Landlords, Second, Property Mark Limited, and third, Scottish Land Estates Limited, who are the petitioners against the Lord Advocate and the Scottish Ministers, who are the respondents, for a judicial review of the cost of living, brackets, tenant protection, close brackets, brackets, Scotland, close brackets, Act 2022. Uh, and this came out yesterday on the 2nd of November. That's the result. I will post um, the link to it uh, and pin it uh, in the comments section underneath. If you want to go through and read it, it like I say, it's 36 pages long. It's very dry legalese, but it is there and that's what's happened. Uh, and so you'll see that there, therein is the problem. And they've effectively legalised um, tenants going in, not paying rent, living there basically rent free for a year. They've legalised the state effectively stealing from landlords because they're saying you can't put the rent up because they need the low rent 
to remain because it's them ultimately paying a lot of it uh, and they want the uh, the excess costs to be absorbed by a land landlord even if it's putting the landlord into making a loss on his property um and so that's that's what their problem is and so they're going oh well, 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 well you know we're going like that well that's why so many landlords are getting out of the market and i've got to say who ultimately can blame them Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I say, it is a, a problem of the SNP's making. It's something they can sort, solve and sort out. But they won't because they won't ever admit that they're wrong. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, stay warm and goodbye.